Hey there Dev Squad, Furtis here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can set up the functionality for our replenish health and replenish stamina buttons. So as you can see here in the last video, we set up our shop menu which is going to give us the appearance of our buttons that we've got here. Now the player has two stats, health and stamina. And with these, they are going to be able to survive and they're also going to be able to sprint. What the player is going to be able to do is essentially trade these shards that they have picked up from killing the enemies to turn it into either health or stamina. So there is a whole bunch of things that we need to do to make this possible. First and foremost, we need to get the cost of the replenishment being added onto the screen we need to get the number of shards the player currently has added onto the screen and then when they press this button we need to see if the cost of these shards is greater than or less than the amount that they've got at the moment and if it is less than then it is going to replenish that health and do all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight in. So what we're going to do is start off with getting the number of shards they have at the moment displayed on the screen. So having said that, we're going to go to blueprints and then we are going to find our shop widget. Now this is going to be underneath our third person BP and blueprints inside of here underneath our shop menu. Once this is loaded, what we're going to be doing is creating a content binding for the text for the number of shards. So select this text here, go to create binding, and then inside of here, what we're going to be doing is simply casting to the third person game mode or the third person character rather, where this information is stored. So as third person character, you want to get the number of shards or get the number of time fragments, whatever your variable is called. And then all you're going to do is hook this up into the return node. Underneath our two text, you want to set your minimum integral digits to two. For your object wildcard for cast to third person character, set this to get player character. Once you've done this, go ahead and hit compile, hit play, and then we're going to test this. To be able to test this properly, we're going to pick up one of these fragments and then open up that bench. And as you can see here, it is now showing us that we have got one shard. And if we wanted to, we could use that one shard for a purchase. So what we need to do now is move on to the logic to check to see whether or not they've got enough shards to make the purchase. And if they do have enough shards, then we are going to make that purchase. So what we're going to have to do is open up this shop menu. And then select your replenish button for your health and then over in the hierarchy we're going to right click on this and rename it we are simply going to be renaming this to replenish health if you can't do it in the bottom left in the hierarchy you can also do it in the details panel so like i said replenish health and with that, what we're going to be doing is scrolling down, we're going to be creating an on-clicked event, which is going to fire off the code that we're hooking up when you click this button. So, on-clicked, what we need to do is start off by getting the information for the number of time fragments they've got. So, that information is stored in the third-person character, so we're going to be creating a cast node to get that information. Object wildcard is going to be get player character. Once we've done this, what we're going to be doing is checking to see whether or not the time fragments is greater than 10 or less than 10. So let me go ahead and do just that. As third person character, get the time fragments. And what we're going to be doing with this is adding a branch and this branch is going to be checking to see whether or not an integer is greater than another. And what you're looking for is greater than or equals to. Now the reason why I want it to be greater than or equals to rather than just greater than is because even if they just have 10, which is the minimum amount, you still want it to go off. So time fragments, A is going to go into here. So you want to see if time fragments is greater than or equal to the purchase price of replenishing your health. Now the cost of replenishing your health is going to be 10. You can set this to any value that you want to. If it is false, what we're going to be doing is simply printing a string. And with this string, it's just going to say 
not enough fragments. And then for testing purposes, what we're going to do up here is just going to say purchased. And now if we go ahead and dive into our game by hitting compile, we can test this. Hit possess and notice at the minute we've got zero fragments. So if we go ahead and press replenish, you can see in the top left hand corner, it does say zero fragments. So that's set up and that is good to go. So now we've done this, we can actually move on to the actual functionality for setting the health and then setting the number of fragments down to the new amount. So what we're going to do is as third person character, we are going to set the health. Now this health is going to be set to the maximum value because that is what this is and the maximum value is one. Once we've set this health to one, what we're going to be doing is then setting our time fragments equal to the cost of this minus the amount they've got at the minute. So do exactly this. So set time fragments and then we're going to do integer minus integer. We're going to get the original value and we're going to take away 10 from that. So if we go ahead and compile this, we're going to be able to see that our value at the moment, which is not currently full, if we press E to replenish this, you can see it is then going to do it if we have enough fragments. Now bear in mind at the minute, we do not have enough fragments. So what I'm going to do for testing purposes is actually put a bunch of these fragments into our scene, make sure that you've got them above the ground level so the player can actually reach them. And we are going to need 10 of these. So just make sure you spawn enough. All I'm doing is just copying and pasting these to get the amount that I need. And that should be enough. So go ahead and hit play, possess. Let's collect all of these beautiful time fragments until I have got 10. And as you can see there, I have now got 10. I can run up to the bench, hit replenish. And as you can see there, it then took away those 10 fragments and it gave us full health. Now, what you will notice is over here, it did not move this bar. And the reason for that is because this bar is not actually linked to our health. So we need to set that up now. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go into our shop widget and we are going to select that bar. Now with this, all we're gonna do is go to our binding for the percentage underneath the progress and we are going to create one. And with this information, all we're doing is casting to the third person character. And as the third person character, all we're doing is simply getting our health and putting this into the return value. Object wildcard is going to be get player character. So if we go ahead and hit compile now, hit play and possess and press E, you can see this is now directly linked. And if I was to collect 10 of these lovely little fragments, getting as many as I can here, and then replenish it, what you're gonna happen now is you're gonna see the bar inside of the shop move and that is all set up. Now what I also need to do for the health is tell it or tell the player the cost of purchasing this health is 10, which should be displayed here. So we're gonna go into our shop menu and we are simply going to be setting this to 10. And that is absolutely everything set up for our health. So all we need to do now is just go in and do the same process for our stamina, just changing out the references from health to stamina. So with the stamina here, we are gonna set the content for the text for the price to 10 because that's the price we want to work with. We are then going to get our stamina and with this, we're going to be creating a percentage binding. So go to details, progress, percentage and create a binding. And then all we're doing is getting the value for that. So cast to the third person character as the third person character all we're doing is getting our stamina or getting our sprint energy. And then sprint energy is going to go into the return value. Object wildcard, once again, get player character. Now that sprint energy is also going to go from zero to one. So if I go ahead and hit possess, jump into here, you can see it's going to be full. If I hold down shift, you're going to see it goes down and that is working. 
So now we've done that, all we need to do is simply add in the functionality to purchase that refill of Sprint. So open up your shop menu one last time, go to replenish and we're going to be creating an unclicked event for this. Open this up and all we're doing is copying the code. So we're going to do cast to third person character and then with this we're going to get the object wildcard which is the get player character and then we're going to run a branch check to see whether or not the player has got enough time fragments. So we're going to do integer less than or integer greater than or equal to rather and then we're going to be getting the time fragments value so as third person character get the time fragments and then with the time fragments hook this up into our a and then the cost of the purchase which is 10 once we've done this and then all we're doing is simply setting our sprint energy to one which is going to refill it entirely once we've done this what we're going to be doing from here is simply carrying on and setting our time fragments once again we need to be referencing this from the third person character so hook it up just like that we are going to be setting it to the value we've got at the minute and we are going to be doing integer minus integer so a is going to be time fragments and b is going to be the cost of purchase again which is 10 and we're going to hook it up so it works just like this for our print string we are going to be hooking this up into our false so if they don't have enough to purchase this sprint refill it's going to tell them that they do not have enough shards go ahead and hit play possess hit replenish by default it's going to say not enough fragments if i press e to run out of here use the bit of my sprint energy so it goes all the way down to zero and then collect some shards and then try replenish it. When I press that replenish button, you are going to notice it will refill it and it is going to do absolutely everything that you need it to. Now, one thing that I am going to add on top of the functionality that we've got here is we're going to check to see whether or not they've already got the maximum value. Because if they've already got maximum health and maximum stamina, we don't want them to be able to waste their time fragments. So what we're going to do is open up this shop menu, we're going to go to our graph, and just before this branch here, what we're going to do is simply check to see whether or not our sprint energy is equal to 1. If it is, we don't want this to run at all because they've already got the maximum value. So, as third person character, get sprint energy for the sprint sequence, and what we're going to do is simply float equals to float. If it is equal to 1 and it is at the maximum value, we don't want it to do anything. So if it's true, we're going to break that link. If it's false, we're going to run the code. We're going to do the same thing over here on our first line. So for the health as well, if they've got the maximum health, you do not want it to run this next lot of code. So you want to hook it up just like this as third person character get your health and just check to see whether or not it's equal to one. If it is, don't run the code and you are good. So hit compile, hit play, hit possess. And if I press E and because I've got max sprint energy already, when I press replenish, it is not going to do anything because we've got the maximum value already. So having said that, that is our replenishment for our health and our stamina set up and good to go. There is plenty more functionality for the shop that we need to work on, but for now, that is absolutely everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.